Hello, everyone. Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets here with your latest Bull in the Bear podcast. Now, before I get into this week's update, I just want to let you know that Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell is holding a pretty rare event. It's one of those ones that you very, very rarely ever hear of. He's going to share his strategy that he guarantees will make you 100% profits every single month on the average. At least one trade on the average every month, 100% winner. Just go to the website, theinvestingsecret.com. That's www.theinvestingsecret.com and find out how you can be part of this once in a lifetime event. You don't want to miss out. Now, I want to get on with today's podcast. Growing up, you all remember that there was something that you always wanted that wasn't good for you and you were always told no. Whether you went to the candy store or, or, or went to get a, a soda or, or wanted to go out to a fast food restaurant or whatever, you were told no. For me, it was my grandmother, and I love my grandmother to, to death, and, and, and she would always say, you know, no, it's not good for you, or, or no, you can't have that, or, or no, you're not supposed to eat that, or no, you're not supposed to have that, or whatever, and I understood that. I, was, I, I had a lot of respect for my grandmother, and, and, and so I listened every time she said that, and, and these are all phrases that, are, that were reminiscent of things that my grandmother would tell me if I asked for something that wasn't healthy or wasn't good for me when I was a kid, but when I got older, I did whatever a young adult does, whatever I want. And, and, and that's what leads into today's discussion. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, to think about all those things that you're told no, that you can't have, they're not good for you or whatnot. But as a smart investor, you look past all that. It's not about, um, you know, your health, the health values of a product you want to invest in. You're looking at the stock value or the company value, not necessarily the product. I mean, there's sometimes there's some instances where you may shy away from something because you just don't agree with it. And that's totally fine. Um, but you know, it's why people are still investing in things like tobacco, cannabis, alcohol, other sin stocks, and, and something else that smart investors are, are flocking towards that aren't necessarily sin stocks, um, but they do produce products that may not necessarily be the healthiest for you. And I'm talking about energy drinks. Now, these are caffeinated beverages that are supposed to give you a boost of energy when you drink it that can last up to three, four, five hours. And they're meant to kind of get you through the rest of your work day. And from personal experience, I can tell you that they actually do work. It may not necessarily be the healthiest for you, but they, their, their effects are as promised. And millions of others think so too. The energy drink market is expected to grow about $86 billion worldwide by 2026, according to Allied Market Research. And I think energy, energy drink stocks are, are poised for a big breakout in the coming years because of this trend. And, and, and the trends right now tend to agree. Uh, but looking at different energy drink stocks can be a bit overwhelming. It's like looking at anything. You know, you want to invest in tech, but there are thousands of tech companies out there you can invest in. You want to look at pharmaceuticals. There are thousands of pharmaceutical companies to look at. It can be kind of, um, you know, a, a little challenging which is why you turn to people like myself and Adam O'Dell and Charles Sizemore to kind of point you in that right direction and give you that profitable, sound, uh, solid advice. So I went a step further here and, and found an exchange-traded fund that has a strong percentage of its holdings in companies like Monster Beverage and Celsius Holdings. Both of these are strong uh, energy drink provider. And now here's a side note for you. One of these companies is actually going to be on Adam O'Dell's watch list that comes out this week, and the other has been on the watch list before, which means we are very sure they, they have performed very strong in our green zone ranking system. So uh, something to kind of think about. The ETF I found was the Invesco Dynamic Food and Beverage ETF. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange under, interestingly enough, PBJ, peanut butter and jelly, PBJ. Now, according to ETF database, PBJ invests in both consumer staples and consumer discretionary stocks, which means it invests in companies that provide things you need, and it invests in companies that provide things you want. And it, so it gives a kind of a broad blend of companies that's in its portfolio. And of its top 15 holdings, Monster and Celsius are both on that list. The ETF has an annual dividend yield of about 1.12%, which equals to about 40 cents a share on a yearly, on a yearly basis. And it's got a 0.63% expense ratio. So it doesn't necessarily have the highest dividend yield and it doesn't necessarily have the lowest expense ratio. So it's kind of right there in the middle. However, in terms of valuation, PBJ is actually very solid. It's got a price to earnings ratio of about 18.2 and compared to its, uh, its peers of about 11 other ETFs of similar value, it actually ranks number two in terms of valuation, and that's very, very good. PBA stock pro PBJ's rather stock price has been on the move since reaching a low in March of 2000. It bottomed out at about $25 a share during the corona crash back in March of 2000. And since then, the ETF has rebounded and gained more than 43% 
in the last nine months. It hit a new high of more than $35 per share just this month in January, and I think it still has some room to grow. But beyond just energy drinks, I really like how diversified the holdings are with this ETF. It holds food companies, uh, traditional beverage companies, beer brewers, even grocery stores. So it has a wide range. It's, very, it's a very, very diverse food and beverage ETF. And PBJ performs about in line with its competing ETFs with one slight difference. I compared PBJ with the First Trust NASDAQ Food and Beverage ETF, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under FTXG. And for most of 2000, PBJ was actually moving slightly higher than its competitor, but that changed in November. But there's a big difference here. As 2020 was coming to a close, FTXG was starting a downward trend while PBJ was actually moving up. And I believe PBJ is going to go back to beating FXTG in 2021 and making it a strong investment for you. But you, to take advantage of this uptrend, you probably want to get in now while the price is still low in a, in a low form and has the opportunity to move even higher. It's showing some short-term momentum. It's not quite at the place where I would say buy high, sell higher, but it's starting to make that move. So I think if you want to invest now, now would be a good opportunity. If you want to wait a little bit, that's okay too um, to see if maybe that upward trend continues. Uh, but again, like I said, if you want to take advantage of the uptrend for PBJ, you want to get in here relatively soon. So at least put it on something that you want to watch uh, if you're not going to buy it outright. Now, make sure you check out our YouTube channel uh, and just head over to youtube.com uh, and search for Money in Markets. We've got the green bull and the bear logo. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and get notified each and every time you put, we put up a new video. Just do that by subscribing. And then when the little bell comes up, you push, push on that and you get notified each and every time we put out a new video, whether that's the bull and the bear, our week ahead, or our, can our marijuana market update. Now, if you want to listen to the bull and the bear as a podcast, you can do that as well on your favorite podcast indicator like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, and a wealth of others. Just subscribe, get alerted each and every time. Also, make sure whatever platform you're on, leave us a review, leave us a comment on any of these platforms. I love to see feedback, uh, whether it's good, bad, and different. Tell me what you're investing in. Tell me what your thoughts are on the market, whatever they might be. And I would love to see that and maybe even use some of that, com some of the, uh, that commentary for a, a podcast an update or a week ahead. Now, if you do have a question, a particular stock or sector you'd like us to take a look at, just email us at the bull and the bear at moneymarkets.com, and we would love to take a look at what you have to say and respond to any of that feedback. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you to head over to moneymarkets.com. Each and every day, we give you uh, a couple stories that provide safe and sound investment information, whether it be from me, from Charles Sizemore, from Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell, Mike Carr provides this chart of the day. Any of that information is val valuable, and it's absolutely free for you to get. Make sure you sign up for our daily e-letter, which is also free as well. And who doesn't like free, especially when it comes to the investment world. Now, coming up uh, later this week, uh, Money and Markets editor Charles Sizemore will be with me. We're going to talk about a couple stocks, tell you whether they're ones we think you should buy or ones you should maybe stay away from. Until next time, though, this is Money and Markets research analyst Matt Clark, also the host of the Bull and the Bear podcast, the Marijuana Market Update, and the week ahead, wishing you all safe trading.